Welcome to another exciting Godot tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be looking at spawning enemy scenes using a park scene and a timer. Now, it's been a while I have not released any Godot related video tutorials. This is because I've been busy with my research thesis, but now I'm almost done and expect videos on a weekly basis. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. To spawn enemy scenes using a park scene and a timer, we need two things. That is a park scene and a timer. We already have a scene that we are going to park and spawn. However, we don't have a timer. And therefore, we need to go to the main scene. And inside the main scene, make sure that the main is selected and add a timer node. Just search for a timer and add a timer node. And we can rename this timer node as a spawn, spawn enemy timer. And from here, select the enemy spawn timer and change the wait time to 0.5 seconds. And after that, click on auto start. This is going to ensure that the timer started immediately, the game is ready. And from there, on the left side of the inspector, there's a note, click on it and you will see many signals. However, in this tutorial, we have our focus is the timeout. So select on the timeout and press connect and connect it. Now this will create a function that will be called every 0.5 seconds. But if you observe it, the function is created outside the class. And if we go ahead and run this, we're going to have an error. This is because the function is supposed to be created inside the class. So to fix this, we're just going to select this function, cut it and paste it inside the class. And from here now, we can just go ahead and print something to make sure that the function is called every 0.5 seconds. We can go ahead and type gd.print and then say enemy is spawn and save it and then run it. Now, if you look at the console, you'll see that each 0.5 seconds, it is printing enemy is spawn, enemy is spawn, enemy is spawn. And that means that our signal is working. Now we can scroll on top of the script and load the park scene. Now the first thing we need to do is to give our park scene a name that is this enemy scene. And from there we use resource loader to load the scene that we created, that is the enemy scene. Now this is the path to that enemy scene. And from there we need to cast it since it is just loaded as TSEN, we need to cast it as a park scene. Now we have this scene loaded. From here now we can go to the timer function here and spawn the scene. Now the first thing we need to do in this function is to declare a Godot widget body. That is Godot widget body. Since our body is a rigid body, we give it a name E and then from there we can say E equals to now enemy that is the enemy scene the park scene that we loaded dot instance we can get an instance of that park scene but this instance is a park scene and therefore we need to cast it as a godot rigid body so we just say godot dot rigid body now this will cast it as a rigid body and from here now we can just declare a position for this rigid body that is going to be a vector tree go to vector tree and the name is going to be a pose and from here we can just say again this is going to be e dot get translation now we get the translation of the we get the translation of that enemy since we are going to change the position and from here now we can manipulate the z position the z position is going to be pose dot z which is going to be equal to negative 500 in this case and from there we can say e dot set translation since we've changed the translation now we set it to that pose that we we have now and from here now we can add the enemy that is just going to be our child and then we add the e you can save the script and open up godot and go ahead and run the project and see how it looks now if you run it now every 0.5 seconds the enemies are spawning at the middle of the scene 
Now from here now we can go ahead and manipulate the X and Y position of the enemies to make sure that they are randomized. Now we can scroll up and declare a random variable R that is just going to be random R goes to new random. This is going to we are going to use this to randomize the X position. Now we go back to the spawn enemy function. The post Y is going to be two, and now we can just save it first and run it and see how it looks. Now the they are all spawning at the middle of the game, but now the Y axis is a lot more better. Now we can go ahead and randomize the X position. Now to randomize the X position, the first thing we need is to have an int x run sorry just want to make it x run is equals to r dot next then we can specify the random the randomness is going to be from negative 5 to 5 and then we multiply it by 5 now from here now we can set the position dot y post dot x rather is equals to post dot x minus x run and now we from here we can save it and see how the game looks now the game is looking a little bit better now from the previous tutorial now we can do the same thing for the skills we can come back here and randomize the skill now to randomize the skill the first thing we need to do is to declare a godot tree godot vector tree as skill and from here now we can just get the skill of the enemy and from here we can declare an int value which is going to be this skill factor that is s equals to r dot next and this scale is going to be between 2 to 4 you can choose any value you want and from here we can multiply the scale by 3 after that we can set the enemy scale back to that scale now we can go ahead and save it and go back to the go dot now we can delete this enemy inside the scene since it is added by us inside the we just go ahead and delete that one and from here now we can go ahead and run the project and see how it looks now every 0.5 seconds an enemy will be spawned and they are randomly spawned thank you for watching and don't forget to like subscribe or comment and see you in the next tutorial